Not so long ago, most vegan options on a restaurant menu were seriously lacking in taste. But in the mid-2000s, Melbourne chef Shannon Martinez found herself at the forefront of a plant-based revolution. Back in 2006, I was working in a pretty iconic rock and roll pub venue. And as time went on, I started getting asked more and more for vegan options. And that really back then hadn't come into my life much at all in terms of being a chef. So that's when I started sort of researching into it and looking into it. And then I created a vegan menu and it just went ballistic. Today, Shannon owns two of Australia's most prolific plant-based eateries, Collingwood Hotspots Smith & Daughters and Smith & Deli. So my first customers were definitely vegans. I'd say they were probably die-hard vegans at the start. But over time, that has definitely changed. And now I direct more of what I do towards the meat eaters because I want to show them how they can reduce their meat intake without giving up all the things they love. Shannon's trailblazing businesses have gained worldwide recognition for their vegan versions of everything from fried chicken to beef bourguignon. We use multiple things recreating meats. Um, almost all of them are made in-house, and you'll find that some of them will either be wheat protein based, some will be mushroom based, some will be soy based. Do you ever get people coming in for a meal and not realising until afterwards that it's not real meat? Uh, that's definitely happened a lot <laughs> and the reactions are mixed. Um, they eat it, they love it, they find out it's plant-based. Some people get really excited by that and some people not so excited by that. While some Australians remain reluctant to jump on board, the plant-based meat movement has been steadily gaining steam for the past decade. Between 2018 and 2021, the number of meat and dairy substitutes purchased at Australian supermarkets grew by 29%. And a recent study found that over the past 12 months, nearly a third of Aussies have made a conscious effort to reduce their meat consumption. We're predominantly seeing interest for health reasons from the older population who are well aware now of the implications of diet in health-related disease, whether it's type 2 diabetes or whether it's heart attack, stroke, etc. But we're also seeing the younger generation who are more interested in novel foods. They're far more interested in environmental issues. And so they're beginning to recognise the relationship between food and those issues. Dr Simon Eason is the Executive Director of Food Frontier, an independent think tank with a goal to diversify Australia's protein supply. We know that agriculture contributes over 26% of total greenhouse gas emissions. And we also know that even if we eliminated uh, greenhouse gas emissions from the fossil fuel industry, we would still not meet our targets of limiting global warming to 1.5%. So animal agriculture is something we must address. And it's easily addressable, more so than many other sectors. And what do you think are the barriers to wider adoption of plant-based meats in Australia? Look, I think it comes down to taste and value for money. Certainly in the early days, a lot of promise was around plant-based meats, that you were getting the same experience that you were getting from other food choices. And I think people were disappointed. Um, but I think that's improving. One of the most popular ranges of plant-based meat sold in Australia, Love Buds, is developed by an innovative team of food scientists who use cutting-edge technology to make their products taste as close as possible to the real thing. We have an instrument in the lab, a uh, uh, gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, where we can actually analyse the flavour and have a good understanding of what levers we would need to pull and what types of ingredients we might want to use to get those types of attributes. And then we have texture measurement instruments as well, where we can like measure the hardness, the juiciness, the texture of different things to try and get as close as possible to a target that we might have defined. Early this year, we were at Meatstock, which is a festival of all things meat, and we had 12,000 dedicated carnivores try our product. And look, 95% of them said that our products were pretty amazing and convincing and that they would definitely consider buying them in the future. One of the concerns raised about plant-based meats is how processed they are. Do you think this is a valid concern? I think we're right to be concerned about things like ultra-processing. A great deal of our food, particularly in discretionary foods, are ultra-processed foods. But if you compare a plant-based meat burger with a, with a meat burger, if you compare a plant-based meat sausage or meatball or schnitzel with its alternative, then generally across the five key dimensions that we talk about in nutrition, 
the plant-based meat product comes out more favorably. First, it generally has a higher quantity of protein. Second, it has fewer calories. And it has fewer calories typically because it doesn't have any saturated fat. If it does have fat, then it will have good fats like omega-3 oils. Sodium generally is slightly lower, although they're, they're possibly the same. But finally, the plant-based meat product has fiber. Meat does not have any fiber, and we now know how important fiber is in our diet. So the vegan ham is made from wheat protein, all made by hand, right next door at the deli. Super high in protein, so this is a really, really amazing way to get that in, um, if that's something in your diet that you're lacking. I can't wait to try it. Well, enjoy. Mm. It's got that beautiful smokiness. Mm -hmm. Really good texture when you bite into mm -hmm. it. Um, just a really full flavour as well. It's yeah. delicious. Oh, thank you. I have no idea it wasn't real ham. Good, that's the goal. <laughs>